Welcome, welcome, welcome to Walking Through Glass, the podcast. I am so glad to have you join me today and my very special guest, Lady V, the SEO queen, who is coming to shed some light on motherhood, mindset, and mental health. Lady C, tell them a little bit about you. Well, my name is uh, Lady Z, aka the SEO queen. And I'm a violinist, an author, a digital strategist, a president of TSQ Marketing Incorporated, and also an author of SEO Training 2017, Search Engine Optimization and Marketing for Small Business, and the upcoming book, Black, Brilliant, and Maybe Bipolar. You can go to blackbrilliantandmaybebipolar.com to get on the email list, the waiting list for when the book is available. All right. Well. One of the things that I love about Z, as I affectionately call her, (laughs) and so many other people, is that she's very authentic in her truth about who she is. And as women, unless we really get to that space where we can be real about who we are and how we show up every single day, then We get stuck and we get stuck in places that can become very dark places. We can get stuck in places where we begin to question who we are, why we do certain things um, and and a host of other areas as well. So in the month of May, I decided that not only is it Mother's Day, it's also my birthday, one of the greatest days. I wanted to make sure that we also address the mental health aspects of this cycle. As women, as moms, we're supposed to be okay because we make everything okay. And we spend so much time on others, making sure that they have their mask on, that we don't put our own on. And the repercussions of that and the impact of that is often us having to deal with some very serious issues and some emotional traumas that we hide. I wanted to briefly touch on the Aisha Curry conversations that are being had and and say, I understand. I get it. I get it. Now, I'm not agreeing or disagreeing or feeling, and I'm not here to judge of what she should be feeling, what she shouldn't be feeling. That's the problem in itself, that we spend so much time judging other women about why they feel the way that they feel, that we ourselves often hide our real feelings. And then we have, you know, three bottles of wine later and a couple of drinks and now with, you know, the latest laws, maybe a couple of joints to go with it, you're, you're starting to try to medicate your way through. And I want to say, number one, that it was very brave of her to go on that platform and speak the truth that many other women wish that they could actually speak. 
Second of all, I want to say that at some point in our time, if we're truly honest with ourselves, especially as mothers, if we've gone through the pregnancy stage, the childbearing stage, we've raising the children stage, the transformation stage, and we look in the mirror and we then wonder, who am I? Do I still have it? You know, did I lose it? Am I still attractive? And it's not so much that you need someone to hit on you. It's not so much you need someone to validate your sense of self-worth, but it feels good. And we've learned that, you know, when I say learned, I'm not saying that you read it in a book at school. I'm saying that that whole concept of, you know, social engineering and, and, and mindset, you know, impartation, we picked up. So many ideals of what we should be as women, how we should act as women, what we should be doing as women, what we should look like, what makes us attractive, that we sometimes get lost that we are enough and we are fabulous just as we are. And that's a very real emotion and it's a very valid space um, to be. And so I know that a lot of people I've weighed in, you got the memes running all over the place. But at the end of the day, it's her truth. And I felt that she was very brave to speak her truth. And if we really started to dig a little bit deeper about the journey, many, many of us can empathize and say, yeah, uh-huh, I, I've been there before. I don't know, see, what, what do you... I know you have some thoughts on the whole situation. Well, I have to say, I didn't think about it the way you you have so eloquently put it. You know, I, I didn't see that episode of Red Table Talk. I did see the memes online. And I know for me in my journey, um, just being free from the need for external validation has been a very important piece to the the improvement of my mental health, I think it's so easy to depend on others for your self-esteem and confidence that, you know, when that is that external validation is not there, it's easy to fall into depression. You know, one thing that my soul coach taught me is that, you know, everything you need, you, you possess. And, that, that means, you know, when it comes to, you know, how fabulous I am, usually being, being able to be Uh-oh. Something's happening with you. Oh, there it is. Something's okay. Happening. Can you hear me okay? Okay. So okay, what I was saying it. is I think, you know, I've come to a, a point in learning where I'm I'm so just focused on loving myself and loving those in my, my life and caring about the, those very important relationships. You know, I love a a compliment just like the next woman, but it's, it's the icing on the cake. It's not what I'm living off of. It's not the meat of, you know, my validation. The meat of my validation comes from myself and it comes from God. And that that's my perspective. I mean, I, I totally get it. And, and one thing that she said, you know, in BuzzFeed News, she said, you know, I want it. I made this confession because I wanted I wanted other um, women to know that they are not alone. And that they're not the only ones with insecurity. And right, that's one of the reasons right. why I founded the Lead Her Shift movement. Remember? To shift the way we think about ourselves as women. And how we respond as women. And so the way we think about ourselves plays such a part. You will never rise above the self-image you have of yourself. And when you wonder why it doesn't work, this didn't happen. Why is my life, you know, doing this other stuff? Because it goes back to how do you see yourself? And that so many women present a false 
image on the outside, yes, they are polished hair quality. Yeah, and, and nuts, that comes for me heels. when I was at that point in time is I was and sacrificing. It's like those little people talk about microaggressions. You know, I was engaging in micro sacrifices, you know, daily and, and how I communicated, what I chose to say, what I chose to, to deal with. And when I finally said, you know what, I'm going to be brave and hold that space where I can be honest and say, you know, I'm really not comfortable with this interaction. I need to leave this conversation. I don't want to do this. No, I don't want to do this. And when I start using that word, no, (laughs) it was really powerful for me. And just being you know, someone mentioned online, I, I was, I think uh, Shannon Hernandez said something about the joy of missing out, engaging in the joy of missing out. And I, I find a lot of, of peace in that. You know, mm-hmm. I know where Aisha Curry is coming from as far as, you know, that that external validation. And and I mean, I, I love male attention too, but there comes a time in a woman's life, there's a time in my life where it's important for me to look inside myself and validate myself and be happy with myself and enjoy the journey. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And embrace the journey. But what's so critical about the, what they call it, the fallout or the discussions, which I'm actually happy that they begin because it ties into my new book, Walking with ultimate guide to be saying sexy and significant in a male dominated world and the launch that's coming where we have these intimate circles where we as women can remove the layers and remove the mask and have conversations about what we're really dealing with because we're not alone. So I think back to, and here, and here's an example. And at a time when you gain a lot of weight or you have a lot of weight and you remove the weight, you remove the pounds, okay? And you see this a lot in people who drastically lose weight, okay? And when they lose weight and they begin to show up, they're looking for attention to validate this new sense of worth. Like, okay, now I'm beautiful. No, you are beautiful at any size, right? But that's hard because it takes a mind shift. And they often tell you, when you go through counseling, when you lose weight, is that you have to do that because sometimes when you're looking in the mirror, you keep still seeing the same Absolutely. person. Absolutely. You know, I, I agree it's with you. Mind. It's your mindset. That's it's why I think Lizzo is such a you. powerful and, um, star right now because, you know, she's she's not your, you know, size zero, you know, Taylor Swift looking pop star. She's 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 a full figure woman, I don't know what size she is, but she's definitely not a size zero and it's just so powerful. Oh, excuse me, my mom just turned that off. <laughs> yeah, but uh what I wanted to say is, is you know, I I I have been north of two hundred pounds and I know how I felt when I had all that weight on and when I when I lost the weight, yeah, there definitely is, you know, uh, uh, a mindset shift and I, I, I have shown up in the world differently. But the thing is, it's like everything that you need as a woman, you have. You have everything you need. You just have to believe it and receive it. Mama, I don't yep. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, um, a point to, to wrap up um, even like the, the Aisha Curry conversation. You know, I love to have conscious conversations. That's what we have to do on the show. And one person had shared on Facebook and said, you know, people are reacting to one woman being vulnerable and sharing her truth. And People came out and attacked her, but now there's people that come out and support her. And I think that mimics 
what we see also in the corporate space, in the business space, in the entrepreneurial space. When women say, here's how I'm feeling, here's, here's what, how I'm processing who I am right now and my why, then there's a, a plethora of commentary. Now, I, I in, in shifting from, okay, Aisha Curry, mega, you know, um, mega star, married to the GOAT, the great game last night, Golden State. But anyway, I went to an event yesterday morning on um, data privacy. And this is a corporate event, C-suite executives, business owners, um, mid to large cap companies dealing with how um, data breaches and the protection of information is key and critical, and what are the next practices um, of innovation to make sure that we safeguard our information? Because you know, in today's world, information is 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 king, is golden. And I met this woman, and she came up to me really quick, and um, my spirit was a little disturbed, you know, but she reached out, she was hi. And she grabbed my hand and she squeezed my hand. I believe in a strong handshake, but she squeezed my hand so uber hard. And she's like, oh, I'm so-and-so. And how are you? And I said, okay, I told her I was. And, and I had a committee member because I'm on the committee. I'm on the advisory board um, for our executive next practices. And she's like, oh, are you? did you put this together? And how did you get in this? And I want you to invite me to join and participate in. This is all in a matter of two minutes. I'm like, Oh, hi, I'm Dina, you know, and, and so she's like, well, what do you do? What do you talk about? And so she said, you know, whatever. And she, and, and here's the point that I'm getting to say, I said all that to give you hope to begin to build a framework. So she says, what do you love to speak about? You know, I know you're a speaker. And I said, and what do you do? I said, I help individuals, organizations also make culture shifts, get really clear about really what their mission, vision, and values are, become very confident about the goals and the implementation they want to set and consistent about the actions that they take. And I said, but I have a passion for women in the marketplace. And really, I love to work with groups and, and women to help with this as well, I guess we call women empowerment. And she was, well, now this is a woman. She says, um, well, I kind of agree with that. Don't disagree with that because I believe that women, uh, I, I, don't, I don't agree with women empowerment. I said, can you explain? Explain to me what you mean by that, because I want to process what you I'm trying to understand your frame of reference. And she said, because you know what? I don't think any woman should get a job just because she's a woman. I said, oh, no, that's not that's how you see it. Wow, that's a lot. And that sometimes <laughs> women take it. Too that's far. a lot. It's not even. Just, and this is this woman saying this to me all in the five minute transaction. <laughs> and and she, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm like, it's so like, <clears throat> like forceful. And I just sat back and I've observed her behavior and I cringed inside for her. And she is a prime example. Right. Of why I wrote you know, the book, that, 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 that word significant. That, to be saying sexy and that is so powerful. Know you know, I have is to go back the core root of to understanding that is that you can, it's okay to, to be a woman. Scripture because, she, you know, God called his creation good. Yes. He created man and woman and called it good. And just by the mere fact that we are here, that we're created, we are significant. And it's, you know, many people have different um, theological standpoints or viewpoints. But for me, what I get from the Bible that helps to form my perspective is that I am significant. You are significant. And it's important to remember that, that everybody's on their journey. I wanted to go back to one of the points that you said about, you know, how, you know, we as women can be critical of other women. I think it's important for me, I have to remind myself, you know, as a marketing coach and soon as a, a, a mental health advocate and coach with the launch of this book, it's important for me to understand the journey. Everybody's on their own journey and it's a process to get a greater understanding and to obtain that wisdom that allows you to move with finesse through the world. And so I think, you know, with this whole Aisha Curry situation, it's, it just shows people in their approach to this conversation in different stages in this 
uh, self self actualization journey, and that you know it's important, especially as leaders, as women leaders, to hence lead lead her shift movement to be mindful of the fact that empathy is important to to reach back and help those other women who are on their journey to to confidence, wisdom, and empowerment. Absolutely. And when you are a working mom, whether you're a business owner, whether you are a C-suite executive, whether you are employed, when you are a woman who works or stays at home, but I'm going to speak to the women that work, and you do look at your career trajectory in relationship to motherhood and that you have to make some choices. And oftentimes the choice of whether or not um, you get certain promotions or you have exposure or access to the information needed is, is taken away from you because of the perception or what I call the misperception of what you'll be able to do and how you'll right. be able to perform. And that, that has been as a woman that has been as a, a mom. A, oh, cause you're yeah. going to go need to take time off for the kids. So you're, you're not going to have time to work on this big business deal. And then, but you, Wait, but let me, let, me, let me finish this point because I'm like jumping, because here's the point. Here's here's the, the point that I want to then dig into is that you then have what I call a tale of two cities. You have the woman who then says, you know what, you're right. And she shrinks back, accepts less than and greater than because she gets to raise her children. But the mindset shift of am I enough and did I make the decision leaves an indelible mark. Okay, on her psyche. Then you have the other woman who then wants to be superwoman. I can raise the kids. I can bring on the bacon. I can fry it in the pan. That's the end of the song. I can do this and I can never let him forget these men. I can be a wife, like the mother, and I can do all of these things. But yet she does not take care of herself. And self care is like a, a dirty word as she gets so lost. And trying to show up for everybody else, she does, can't even find who she is anymore. And she ultimately suffers. And at some point along that journey, she's going to crash. Yeah. So I, I look at my I career. Because I mean, that was really, you know, I want, over time. I and I, I, I think you talk about, about that. And what it know took to grow this space, one so company to, from zero dollars to half a million dollars in revenue in two years. And I, and I look at the time I spent working so hard and, and everything else. And, um, now since I, I do have some very real time constraints as a single mom and, uh, and having both my marketing, uh, brand and my music, I have to work smarter and, uh, not harder. And so that means really, you know, really reevaluating you know, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, what my priorities are, where my energy goes and being okay with letting um, some balls just drop or just taking some things completely off the table. And so that, that's where I have had to, to grow and get out of my comfort zone is I, I literally understand without a shadow of a, of a doubt that I cannot do everything. I just cannot. And um, I, I'm really grateful for the team that I'm building. Um, it's just so many people are just have been such a tremendous blessing to the growth of the SEO Queen and Lady Z as two brands. And, you know, you, you definitely need a team. And as a woman who with big dreams and big goals, that's very important to to understand that. Um, 10% of, you know, five people's efforts is way better than, you know, 110% of your own and, and to the detriment of your, your mental health and, and physical health. So.
And that and that's so I'm glad that you brought in that other piece of that. You don't have to do this. Right. And it's okay to cry, but give yourself a time limit. Brush yourself off and get back up. Phrase that pays. And you've known me long enough and I always say it's okay to not be okay. (laughs) You just can't stay there. It's okay to not be okay. Yes. And and even when you react instead of respond to certain things. It's okay to take some time and say, okay, I am going to honor and respect my feelings, not suppress, because people say, you shouldn't feel. Why? You came out of the womb feeling. They smacked you so you cry, okay? To make sure you can start breathing, right? And so um, symbolic, and whether that's true, enough I have to do the additional research on that but if you picture that they're waiting to the baby cries out to really realize that that's how you're going to catch your breath can you imagine how powerful symbolically that is so until you cry out and speak it live it let it go whatever's inside of you you truly cannot begin to really breathe and embrace whatever it is next for you, what I call your next greater. And as moms, we spend so much time holding back our tears and wiping up the tears of others that we get lost in that. But you know what? You don't have to stay lost. There is a roadmap. And if you embrace the journey and realize that we're all on the same journey, but we take different paths, and that just because I'm not where you're at today doesn't mean that I can't give you some guideposts. That's powerful. Give you some signs so that your journey so powerful. may not be as rough as it's needed, but it's still so your true. Journey. I can't move it all, but let me help you and for you to know you're not by yourself. You know? I just, I, it, it is. And, and which I think about our mindset. I do a lot of reading and studying um, a neuro person, neuro what linguistic programming and neuroscience. And so people think, oh, you're just saying that because it sounds good, it's warm and fuzzy. No, it is science. How your brain works is really powerful. Um, and it's actually very really difficult. People really want to take it, take it there. And one of my favorite books of all time, and I'm going to do a study for women only. Um, as I called, um, as a woman leadeth, <laughs> um, because as a man thinks right. by James Allen is a powerful book, one of my favorites. When we think about the fact that it also shares in the Bible, as a man thinketh, so he is, right? Absolutely. So how you see and envision yourself. From the inside out, and when people talk about manifesting great things, you have to believe it. And so there's three stages in my book. There's three stages in my book that I speak to. And everything is in alignment. So we talk about sanity, we talk about sexiness, and we talk about consistency. I talk about clarity, I talk about confidence, I talk, um, talk about consistency, you know, all of that. It's all the same because there's three stages. The very first stage being believing. What do you believe about yourself? Who do you believe you are? Not just today because of your circumstances or your situations. Who do you believe you are so that you can see who you are? You can't get to the becoming, like Michelle Obama's book and talks a lot about it. You really follow the journey and analyze that. You first have to start with believing. Well, I you think, ever get to you know... What do you think? Yeah, uh, my four-year-old just barged into the room. <laughs> yeah, but um, I think those That's are some so some powerful, powerful just shut down points and broke that you up. made. And just being, you know, one thing that I think a lot about is, you know, confidence, self-esteem, meekness, and humility. And it's such a balance. And 
only wisdom can get you there. And I think it's really important, you know, for you to, to, to do the study and talk about as a woman leadeth, because I think, you know, we as women, we don't think about ourselves in those terms enough. And it's important for us to change our, our, our mindset because our world needs for everyone mm-hmm. to show up and do and, and, and live and own their zone of genius. There are so many humongous problems in the world. I mean, I, I don't even want to list all the problems, but um, I think it's, it's critical for, for women to stop comparing themselves to other women and just be their authentic selves and lead in your area. You know, for me, I want to give an example. So you talk about, you know, as a woman leads. Absolutely. You know, I'm a woman and I like, I love music. You know, I play music. I enjoy the artists. Uh, One artist that really is uh, one group, one girl group that really speaks to me is the Clark sisters. Another singer that really speaks to me is Sade. Um, A singer that does not speak to me is Taylor Swift. But there's another woman, another girl that Taylor Swift speaks to. And, you know, I, I put that example out there because everybody has an audience. There's literally billions of people on the planet billions and billions of people on the planet. And when you think about your experience and how much your experience can help others. Mommy. Yes, babe. My daddy had me with a ball on my head. It was an accident. I'll be right there, okay? <laughs> right. Right. Even Joshua being able to pop in. This is what we this is what we deal with, which is moms is that we need to be there when our children need us. Um and we do that, many of us do that very well. But we don't have to do it to the to the exclusion of, I agree. of ourselves. And so to answer this question or just to say I'm here, I see you, is important to us as women. So I don't want to I don't think we should take that away, you know. For the fact, and because our children, are so like I'm here, I'm present. Yeah, uh, Mama, I need it you. To, that, I got hit with a ball. What you gonna do? So, as I was saying before, <laughs> you know, it's it's so important we as women to not be you know, discouraged by other people um, shining. I think you know everybody has a part to play. We have so many huge problems in the world that we need everyone to do their part and. Uh, we need women to, to be their authentic selves and lead and, and not be uh, discouraged from telling their story and to to um, sharing their experience. I mean, going back to the Aisha Curry thing, you know, when I first heard it, you know, my first reaction was, you know, it's definitely a bad thing for your uh, validation to Mom, hinge please, on I'm external sorry, sources. Please, I'm sorry, Didn't you have some food? I think external sources of validation is problematic, but at the same point, I I definitely understand why that is. And that is something that, you know, that I need to speak to, you need to speak to, and my soul coach speaks to, because it's so... Okay. I'll get you something in a moment. I was trying to finish my thought. I was trying. Uh, she said, I can't wait that long. Just said, wrap it up. He said, wrap it up. Go have one of those. Go another one. <laughs> and, and, um, I bought them. That's how I got them. Hear your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. 
like you were saying and and pointing out, and I know we might have off with something, is that for us as women, and as we are really figuring it out, and we are as as single parents and single moms, and then single moms and boys, it's a whole nother show, a whole nother day, and we definitely will have to come back uh, on and we're going to hit that piece. But as Mother's Day, you know, falls in May, and as we really seem to, I guess, like I said, everything really blooms in May, such as myself being born in May, um, we, we really have to be conscious and mindful of what we say to ourselves and also be very mindful of what we allow others to speak over our lives. And during this process and that growth process, and my own included, and some people don't necessarily like it, um, is the fact that I correct people when they try to place particular labels on me. And when you begin to speak in I am statements, it is who I am, who I say I am, who God says I am, not what your perception of me is. And although I do not discount or deny or say, you know, because no one's perfect and I'm definitely not, but I know really clearly who I am. And just because you believe, you think, you perceive me to be something else doesn't mean that I subscribe. And I won't subscribe. And it's not arrogance. It's because I understand the power of thought. I understand the power of self-actualization. But I also understand how people over the course of your life, from before the womb even, have imparted nuggets that help and shape who you are today. And if it wasn't positive, if it wasn't meant to give you life and speak life into you, then you're still dealing with those phantoms, I call them phantom limbs, that have been imparted on your psyche. And so when we're talking about mental health issues, when we're talking about depression, when we're talking about negative self-talk, or, or sometimes we wonder, why can't I ever seem to get it right? Um, I got money. I got this. I got that. But something's just not right. Well, you know what? Maybe we need to go back a little further in your mind movie, in your tape. And somewhere along the way, before you had the power to control what was and what wasn't. And, that, and that's the part, because I said I love studying the whole psychology of the mind and, the, you know, and, and the psyche, is that we cannot refute that at some point in time, someone, somewhere, may have spoken something that you internalized and you may have buried it or you thought you buried it, but it comes back. It comes back. So we have to kind of understand that from a whole nother perspective. And I think as women, we often don't address it as such. And because we don't address it as such, then we're dealing with all this other crazy business along the way. And either we're trying to live our lives for our children, through our children, or we identify that we are because of our children. And we don't really deal with the fact that we are who we are and everything that we need to be great and be the best version of ourselves we had from birth. But sometimes we actually have to, you know, dig it back out and get really, you know, clear and, and pull it back out of us. And, you know, that's just kind of like the truth. And I'm still learning. I'm still growing. I'm still processing. I'm still trying to figure this whole thing out called life. And as I embrace the journey, I feel it's my job, it's my role to bring other women along and to share my story and to make sure that I don't present it as all knowing, which is why I only engage in conscious conversations during my show, is that we need to talk about these things. And I'm not trying to convince you to be like me. I'm saying, what is your story? What is your truth? And how could it help me or how could it help whoever's listening? So I don't know. I don't, I, I mean, it's, it's just been so many different levels and so many different pieces that I want to 
In the one this thing context, that I would tell a younger person or a younger you version of myself. Another woman or a younger version of yourself. One thing. Can I say, tell them two things? <laughs> okay. I would say always ask questions. Always have a good question to ask. Yeah, okay. Tell them and too. my second thing would be you are enough. You are enough. And just like wine gets better with time, we as humans, that's part of the the journey, the seasoning of our lives. And you are enough and ask good questions. Always have a question to ask because learning is a lifelong journey. I talk about asking questions in my book, in the last chapter of my book, Black Brilliant and Maybe Bipolar. The last chapter is called 101 mm. Ways to Improve Your Mental Health and Heal. And one wow. of the 101 ways is asking questions. And I talk about how when I started asking some really difficult but powerful questions, how that allowed me to understand the world in which I move and also make some distinct choices on how I would react and or not react to that. And so I think that's just such an empowering piece to ask the questions. Don't assume about anything. Mm-hmm. Right. No, you're right. Don't assume about anything. And asking questions are really, really, really key. I get the question a lot of, okay, what would you say to X? What would you say to Y? And and like you, I, I will definitely say you definitely need to ask questions. And don't be afraid to not have the answer. And be courageous enough to go through the process to get the answer. And that it's not always pretty. It's not always exactly like we thought or envisioned it to be, but it would be so worth it. And there's three things that you must have to be successful in life. And more than successful, what I love to say is significant because success can be had and lost, but significant is about legacy. What are you leaving behind for others? And that is clarity about what your purpose is. I heard something last weekend and I had never thought about it this way. So of course it caused like a mental paradigm shift for me. And um, what he said was, Derek Luke, he said, it is a lie to tell anybody that you can do anything that they want, that they want that they can do anything that they want. I said, that's not the truth. And I was like, what? You know, what do you mean? You know what I mean? And so he said, you are called to do something specific. And if you're not doing, that's what we call our purpose. And if you're not walking in, walking in your divine purpose and your divine calling, then you truly are just doing Nothing. If you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing, what you're called to do, then does it really matter? And he said it so eloquently. I, mine is not as pretty as his. Um, it was so powerful. That's a powerful point. That's powerful. That I hadn't thought about it that way. Right. Because we always say, right? We always say, you can do whatever you want to do. Right. That's the problem. You're supposed to be doing what you're called to do. And even though, you know what I mean? On your journey, getting there, you might do other things on the road, which is why I say journey. But you're not called to do just anything. You are called to do something. 
And that is your purpose. And that's what you have to figure out. And that's what you need to be doing. And subscribe to Dr. Dina Brown's YouTube channel. With a life of significance. And so my <laughs> advice to all listeners out there. Right. Besides to like, share, comment, invite 10 friends to follow. <laughs> Yes, and describe to Dr. Dina's YouTube channel. <laughs> Besides that, right? <laughs> Is to spend some quiet time to get clear about what it is you're called to do. And if you don't have all the answers, ask questions and seek outside yourself. And that it wasn't meant for you to have all the answers. That's why we have relations, relationals. That's why we are here to connect to people, okay? So that you can get to that point. And that once you're very clear, because you spend that quiet time and you begin to be confident that, yes, this is what I'm called to do. Then you get consistent about building a strategic plan to make. One step at a time on the journey, one additional person at a time, building support, reaching out, saying, hey, I need some help. You're not out there alone. Being brave like Aisha Curry and say, yeah, you know what? I've been through these things. I've got some things. My life seems all pretty and shiny on the outside, but I'm still going through some things on the inside. And I need to share this with you because I'm, you're not the only one out there, my sister. Right. I'm right. dealing with this too. So money doesn't make happiness. Okay. Money doesn't make everything go away, your problems and your insecurities. Look at Kate Spade. Okay. Anthony Bourdain, dead, suicide. Okay. So if, if money was the end all be all, if fame and accolades was the end all be all, then what happened? So that's a whole nother show. But the 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 nugget that I want and to be the biggest takeaway in all of this, especially through in the month of May, when we're focusing on motherhood mindset and mental health, is that as a mom, it's really key that you get very clear what your purpose and your role is. And it's not just being a mom, okay? It's more than that. You're a woman first. And how you think and see yourself as a woman is actually going to impart certain things on your child. Again, a whole nother show because I had a whole nother. It was an emotional week for me. We talk about what we implant in our children. Go back to listen to Walking Through Glass um, the other day. I've done some daily doses with Dr. Vitamin D. They're raw. They're live. They're just 15 minutes of powerful conscious conversation to help you know be, you begin to make these shifts. But when you have children, you've got to think about that because that mental health space, you have a purpose. You have a gift. You're supposed to be here to share that. And if you're not right, you're not together, you don't give yourself the time, then really you're not going to be of service to anyone. And I'll say that to say that today I had a bunch of other things planned and I realized that my week has really been a week. I realized the way that I was reacting to people and feeling and, and the sensitivity that I had that I was drained and I was tired. So I had to start canceling things. And I said, up, oh, I need some me time. And me time was to knock the script time. I can't be around a lot of people. I can't go out and be in tons of crowds with all this different energy. And so I literally, some things that was pretty cool, okay? I was going to go to the Grammy um, event at the Dolby Theater tonight, the, the tribute to legends. And I caused that I can't go. No, I can't go. Dubai. I can't. This is what I can't. I need to just shut it down because right now I'm, I'm on the edge and I can tell that emotion that my cup is empty and I'm tired. And I'm not talking about a physical time. I'm talking about a mental time, an emotional drainage that's going on. And I love me enough to say no to everything else because I'm saying yes to me. So I don't know if you have any parting words, Z, as we, say toodaloo to every these amazing listeners who have part of our conscious conversation. But I want to say, is there anything else you want to impart 
to the listeners? Um, how do they yeah, find you? Yeah, you, you know what? I, I just um, want to say thank you so much, Dr. Dana beginning. Brown, for we'll inviting me onto your podcast, sure Walking Through Glass. I've been um, following you for years now, and you are so fabulous, and I love you so much, and I am so inspired by you daily. Um, your listeners can reach out to me, connect with me by going to black, brilliant, and maybe bipolar.com or going to ladyzhe.com, lady Z. You can go to the seoqueen.net. And I'm also on social media at lady on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Okay, okay, okay. She got hers out there, so I'm going to throw mine in there, too. Again, you can follow me at Dr. Dina Speaks, D-R-D-E-E-N-A-S-P-E-A-K-S, on Twitter and on Instagram. You can definitely subscribe <laughs> and listen to Walking Through Glass, the podcast, available on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, um, Google Music Play, Apple Podcasts. And if you, if you still can't find it, Google it. <laughs> Google me. <laughs> Absolutely. And if this message resonates, if there's something, there's a way, I love to hear that. If there's something that we said, or if you don't agree, you want to weigh in, do so as well. Do so as well. This is a perfect an opportunity to share. Yeah, I, and I again, didn't mention it, um, but it is the, the Jazz and Tech Lounge with Lady Z. You can find that on the Bashani Network. It's distributed friends, on all of the downloads. platforms. Uh, you know, I'm trying to get on my Z, uh, like, iTunes, you know, million uh, downloads. Stitcher, you can talk about your podcast. Uh, um, iHeartRadio, it's, it's everywhere. If you look up Bashani Radio and then search for the Jazz and Tech Lounge with Lady Z, I'll pop right up. Yes. And again, as she mentioned, my YouTube channel, Growing Followers, I'm actually going to be placing new content. And that's where I will be hosting the As a Woman Leadeth series as we begin to look at those shifts, those mental shifts that's needed yes. um, as a woman. So I look forward to having you join me there. I look forward to the launch of my book and my new website, Dr. Dina Speaks. <laughs> Hint. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and everything else. And I so, so appreciate all of you for listening and um, looking forward to um, giving you more amazing content and continue to bring you real insight, real stories, real women, so that we can truly begin to walk in our authentic truth. So thank you for listening. And I look forward to connecting with you again later. Bye-bye. <laughs>